Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Vagetti Pro. It's an as seen on TV product. You might have seen their infomercials. It's a gadget and I wanted to see if it actually works. So here it is. This is the instruction manual that's included with a couple of recipes. It's a tabletop slicer that's supposed to cut fruits and vegetables into thin and thick spirals or ribbons. I love curly fries, so I hope this does a good job with potatoes. This is the base. You put it on a flat surface. Hold it and turn the suction switch to on. This should keep the base attached to your counter. Now you can see it's not moving, it's attached to the counter. There are three blades included. Thin spiral. The blades just slide right into the slot. And there's two more blades here, you can store them here. The ribbon cut. And the thick spiral. The blades are very sharp, so just be careful not to touch them. Slide them back and you can store it on the base. All the parts come apart for cleaning. The base is hand wash only and the other parts are top rack dishwasher safe. You can of course just hand wash the parts in warm soapy water. Use a non-abrasive cleaning brush and not a sponge. This does disassemble for storage. If you press this release button, this comes out for storage. Push it right back in. There's also this tab here with the lock and unlock picture. If you slide it towards unlock, you can remove this part for storage. And slide it right back in and lock. So how this works is you choose the blade that you want and slide it down here. You put your fruit or vegetable between these two parts. You should cut the ends off your fruit or vegetable because they have to be flat, otherwise they won't be held properly. You'd hold this handle with one hand and just turn with the other. Your vegetable will come out here as it's being processed and you should have a plate or bowl on this side to catch everything. I'll try all three blades and we'll see how it works. First, I'll try zucchini with the thin spiral blade. I've cut both ends off, put it in the middle. Push it in so it's held firmly. Okay, that looks good. You can see the zucchini is not moving, it's held properly. Hold the handle and turn this. Don't forget to uh, put the suction down, which I have forgotten to do. Okay, now it's held together. All right. So you have to slide the handle forward as you're holding it. I think it's best to hold it here with one hand and then just push the handle. That seems to work much better. There we go. Okay, we've reached the end. Slide this back. You can see it leaves a little part of the end here and the core. Slide this all the way back and just pull the core out. So this is what's left. So once you figure out how to hold this, Again, this, this whole part has to slide forward. You have to push it forward as you're holding the handle. So the best thing to do is put your fingers here and then just push this forward with your thumb. It's not hard once you figure that out. Okay, so we have our zucchini strands, which look really nice. For the most part, they're one strand, one continuous strand. But of course, in the beginning, since I stopped, I have these little pieces here. I wonder if a hard vegetable like carrot would work. I'm gonna try it. 
I'll put the thick part against here. Cut this in half. Okay, that's pushed in. Okay, let's try the carrot. Okay, that's done. It's really stuck in there. Ah! Just push this out. Okay, there we go. So it did the carrots with a little bit of effort. It does take much more strength than the zucchini because it's hard, but you can see that it is processed. This is nice for coleslaw or just a regular salad. Now I'll take the thin spiral blade out and try the ribbon cut. I'll try another zucchini with the ribbon cut. There we go. So this is what the ribbon cut looks like. Now I'm using the spaghetti on my tabletop. This is not an actual counter that's bolted down. So if you use it on your kitchen counter, it might be uh, a little bit faster. Pretty ribbons. You can always cut these or just separate them and fry them or bake them to eat um, healthy chips. I'll take the ribbon cut out and put in the thick spiral. Now I'm gonna try a potato for curly fries. That's really what I wanna make. I'm gonna use the thick spiral for my curly fries. I've cut the ends off a potato. Push this in. Okay, so the potatoes worked really well, you can see that. I guess I just got the hang of the baguette. There will be some potato juice on the base here, that's okay, we can just wipe that up. Push the core out. Just wipe up the juices. And I'm gonna do one more potato, because I love curly fries. You know, when you push the core, if it's slippery, just use a paper towel or a cloth so you get a grip. And then just pull it out from the other side. So there is a little bit of waste, it's just the end about like half an inch that's wasted. And the core. Now if you're trying to eat healthier or if you just like a lot of raw vegetables, you can of course eat the carrots and zucchini um, raw just like this with some tomato sauce, pretty much like this. There's some recipes in the book. Since I'm not a huge fan of raw zucchini, what I'm gonna do is just saute the zucchini and carrots with some olive oil, garlic, salt, and chili flakes. Add some tomato sauce to the end, and you have a nice 
a vegetable sauce that you can put over pasta. Or you could just saute these in olive oil, a little bit of garlic, onion, chili flakes, and use it as a side dish. It's really fast for a weeknight meal. And it's really healthy. With the potatoes, I'm gonna do something very unhealthy, but really tasty. I'm gonna try to make curly fries with these. I'll put some salt, garlic powder, little chili powder, and fry them up. I'll show you how that looks in a minute. Here are the fried curly fries. Now I have to tell you, if you're used to buying frozen curly fries or having it at a restaurant, they're much thicker, they're crispy on the outside, and they're still soft on the inside because they are very thick. So even with this uh, thick blade, the potatoes will come out very, very thin and crispy. If you cook them to this golden brown level, it'll be like chips, it'll be super crispy. I recommend that you go either very light like this because if you do it light, they're still a little bit chewy on the inside so you get the actual potato flavor and not just crispiness. Or you can go somewhere between these two. This is a little bit darker than this and it's crispy, but it's not burnt. So I would not recommend going dark like this. Just do light or a little bit um, golden like this. They taste really good. All I did was put a little salt, chili powder, garlic powder, onion powder. Just sprinkle it, mix it all in, and fry it up. If you're shallow frying it, like I just took a big pan and I shallow fried it, and if you're gonna do that, you do have to separate the strands, otherwise they'll be big and clumpy and they won't all fry evenly. If you're gonna deep fry it, then it really doesn't matter. You don't have to separate the strands. One of the dangers of frying is that you're gonna have oil left and you're gonna wanna fry more stuff. So what I did was fry the um, ribbon zucchini, you can see this is nice and crispy. This tastes really good just with salt. I know it's unhealthy, but it's really good. These are like perfect fried zucchini chips. They're so tasty. The potatoes fry so quickly in about two minutes, three minutes max, they're done. So with the veggetti, you can make healthy stuff as well as unhealthy stuff. So the veggetti is a cute little gadget. It does work, you saw how it worked. It did really well on the potatoes. I was really impressed. I think the potatoes were the easiest uh, the zucchini was fine, the carrots were a little difficult because it's a very hard vegetable. So I think it works best on softer vegetables. If you want to give this Baghetti Pro a try, I've put a link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. These are so good with ketchup.